What is going on to all my movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new movie review and today we're discussing a new thriller coming to Hulu on Friday by the name of No Exit which is a film based upon a novel of the same name that came out in 2017. Now I got the opportunity to check it out early courtesy of the fine folks over at Hulu and today I will be sharing my thoughts about the film and letting you know if it's worth checking out here in this spoiler free review. Before we break it all down make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to to the channel come and join this awesome community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell as you can see on the screen now if you enjoyed this spoiler free movie review well make sure to give it a thumbs up and also share this review to all the movie fans you know out there especially fans of thrillers and more importantly once you've seen the film what did you think i also want to know from the people that have read the novel and once they've seen the movie which one did you prefer and what were some of the main differences between the book and the movie and then if you were like me someone that hasn't read the book what did you ultimately think about this film let's talk about your pros your cons favorite moments were you surprised by the reveals were you disappointed by the film let's talk about it all in the comments below so for me personally like i just mentioned i have not read the novel i kind of stumbled upon this movie i reached out to hulu literally a couple days ago because i saw a, a glimpse of the trailer i'm like okay yeah this is interesting enough i didn't even watch it trailer. I didn't even read the synopsis. I went into this pretty blind and I want to kind of give you all very vague information about this plot because it's one of those films where I think if you don't, the less you know, the better the experience. So we'll get into that here in a second here. But with all that being said, what did I think about it? Is it worth checking out? Well, let's start off with my positives. Going back to that point I just mentioned, the less you know, the better. So I'm going to give you just a brief synopsis and I will say I did watch the trailer after watching the film just to kind of see if it gave away things. The trailer does a really good job of keeping a lot of the big reveals away. But basically what the film tackles here is this young lady by the name of Darby who is in rehab. She's a recovering addict. She gets a call from a family member letting her know that her mom is in the hospital. Darby wants to go see her the mom in the hospital. But unfortunately, there is a crazy snowstorm that is occurring, which causes her to pull over to a pit stop. And she comes across, you know, a group of people. There is a husband and wife that are there. And there are two other kind of individuals within this resting area. Darby goes out to her car, tries to get some bars, tries to get a reception so she can let her family know, hey, I'm, I'm stuck in this storm. I can't get out of it. I'm going to try to get to my mom as soon as possible. And as she's trying to search for reception, she hears something screaming. She makes her way to this van and there is a little girl tied up in the van. And now it's upon Darby to find out, okay, whose van is this? And who are you people? That's as much as I'm going to give away. And just kind of starting from that, point as far as my positives go this was a movie to me which is a perfect example as things got better as the film went on i'm talking about the story the narrative there's a twist in the genre that the film kind of presents the performances from our main actors gets a little bit stronger it is a film that definitely leaves you on the edge of your seat and kind of getting back into some of those things i liked about the story and and this kind of talks a little bit about the negatives and I'll talk about it more when I get to that part of the, uh, the review, but it starts off a little generic, you know, you're like, okay, Arby seems to be, you know, a stereotypical person that doesn't have that much depth in her character. You learn a little bit about what she's going on and you see that there's tension within her family and it kind of hints towards her trying to get to her mom because maybe the last time she saw her mom, it wasn't like the best conversation. So things were kind of stereotypical within the first like 15 minutes. She makes her way to the lounge and meets these individuals and things just, to me, the first half of the film almost felt like and this is no disrespect to the filmmakers, but it felt very like student film like, very stereotypical, very basic level of filmmaking and storytelling. But then the film to me finds its footing, finds its breath, really picks up its energy once she finds that little girl in the van. And from there on out, we go from this again, kind of stereotypical drama of a sense and then we kind of transition into a mystery and then by the time you get to that third act it's a full-on thriller slash survival film and I really enjoyed kind of going through those elements of the film and really becoming surprised by the twist of the mystery thriller survival aspect so I really like how the film kind of comes together because again those first 15 minutes I'm like yeah 
don't know if I'm really enjoying this, but then it kind of twists itself on its head and it gets better as each act comes about itself, which also, speaking of getting better, gotta say, our lead in this film, Havana Rose Lou, who this is my first time being exposed to her. I kind of looked her up after the fact. She seems to be like some type of social media influencer, a model or whatnot, but she was pretty impressive in this film. Again, that first half, things were kind of looking a little like, man, our lead isn't really hitting those emotional beats. She's not really giving me all that type of like interesting vibes from her character but like the film her character grows more you start to kind of get more into her head psyche you start to understand how important this is that she's willing to do anything to protect the strangers she doesn't know so I really want to applaud the performance by Hannah Havana because like I said as the film progresses gets stronger the narrative gets more interesting the thrilling aspects get more thrilling her performance coexists and kind of goes within the beats of the film and I thought her performance really led to something you were rooting for you really want her to figure things out and make it out of this crazy situation and also I don't want to neglect there are some veterans that make their way in this film some supporting cast members one for example I mentioned that there is a husband and wife in this rest stop played by Dale Dickey and Dennis Haysberg now I'm a fan of both of their works and particularly Dennis I grew up with a lot of films that he was in you all know him as the insurance guy their roles were pretty pivotal to the film because again whose van is that? What is their backstory? There's a couple other individuals. There's one more than individual that I wasn't the biggest fan of his performance, but from the most part, I thought our supporting cast definitely complimented the story, but I have to say, the standout actor for me is a gentleman by the name of Danny Ramirez, who I've been following for quite a few years now. I remember the first time I saw Danny, he was in this film by Sam Levinson by the name of Assassination Nation. A lot of you all may remember him as Torres. He played in Falcon and Winter Soldier, and this film really impressed me in his performance. All of his other roles, he's been strong. He has like really good screen presence, and without giving too much away about his character, like I said, he's one of the other individuals in the rest area. He gives you a lot of range in this role. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. And, and like I said, Hollywood, is go he's going to be put on notice because not only has he been, like I said, he has good screen presence. He's really doing his thing in this film. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him in Top Gun Maverick. But I thought, for me, the standout character, the standout performance was Danny Ramirez. Ramirez, and once you all see the film, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So really good performances, a, a film that gets better as it goes on. And I will say, Without spoiling it, there is a, when a film can make me cringe and make me kind of tie myself up and kind of watch the film like this, I give it kudos and I won't say when and where and what happens, but if you all have seen Mike Flanagan's film that is based on Stephen King's novel called Gerald's Game, if you remember that scene with the handcuffs and how disgusting that scene was, there isn't like, this movie doesn't have a scene that's like beat for beat for that, but it has something involving someone's hand. And listen, when that scene comes about, I was like, I couldn't watch them. Is, this, is it over yet? Because it really kind of built attention and it really kind of made me curl up. And when a film could do that, I always want to give it props there. So once you see the film, you know what I'm talking about. And I wonder if that scene is in the book. Let me know for those book readers. But getting to some of my criticisms, I will say, I mentioned how the film starts off a little stereotypical, a little stale, a little generic some might say a little bland and boring but uh and again it gets better but i will say as far as the mystery element the film doesn't hold its breath doesn't hold its cards too close to the chest when it comes to it reveals something pretty big pretty early and then there and i will say there is another reveal that i did not see coming but when you look at the who what and why that actual mystery box wasn't as creative or inventive or unique as I hoped that it wouldn't be and also it didn't make that much logical sense again once you've seen the film and from book readers I don't know if it's the same beat by beat of like why this little girl's in a van but I found that to be a little bit lackluster and not as interesting as I was hoping it could be and also I will mention there was a particular performance there's another character by the name of Lars who I get why they were giving him the direction to play that particular character, but I just felt like it was almost too on the nose and wasn't giving me enough from the rest of the supporting cast. He almost stood out like a sore thumb in regards to that actor's performance. And the last but not least, the, the actual subplot involving our main character, Darby, doesn't have the payoff I was looking for. Again, I mentioned, you learn very early on, this is in the trailer, she says she's a drug addict, and there is a, a, a theme that goes on in regards to her putting someone else's life before hers, and I appreciate that narrative, but then 
it didn't have a good payoff. And, and again, when you see the film, you know what I'm talking about. And I almost don't even know why that whole uh, addiction angle was even brought to the forefront because it doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't have that much of a satisfying payoff. But honestly, those are like the only criticisms that really come to mind. So before I give you my overall score, if you haven't already, make sure to like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Overall, No Exit does the thing that I love about when films start off a little rocky but ends on a good note, and this does that to the T. It hits so many different beats and different genres. Again, it starts off as a mystery. Who is the owner of the van with the little girl in the van and then it evolves to a thrilling survival film and I really enjoy those elements. I enjoy our performance from our main lead. Danny Ramirez steals the film. It does have its criticisms as I mentioned as far as the actual who, what, and why and it doesn't really add up and doesn't give me all the creative juices I was hoping for and also some of the subplots didn't really give me a satisfying conclusion but at the end of the day I was thrilled. I was cringed up at points and I really enjoyed this film. So with that being said, do I recommend you all give no exit a watch on hulu on friday yes i think you will enjoy it so i'm going to give this film a 3.5 out of 5 and when you all watch the film again if you read the book and you've seen the film let me know the differences which one did you prefer and then again if you were like me and haven't read the book what did you ultimately think of the film pros cons favorite moments least favorite moments let's talk about that all in the comments below thank you all again for watching this movie review if you haven't already before you leave make sure to like this review share it comment and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hope you all enjoyed it hope you're staying and safe as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content we'll catch you all on the next video